Before we start with today's video, I'd very much appreciate it if you could do me a solid, leave a like, leave a comment, and share the video as it really helps this channel. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Subdates 220616.2 I need to run a weapons simulation just to be certain of our course of action. Small problem though, Ensign Bork's on the holodeck and I need to use it. So I'm going to have to send Dorkter in to sedate him and run the test while Bork is present. Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. Sorry about this visual, if you are the type to watch the videos that is. I have a headache, okay? Consider this... A low energy for the 180th exhibition of stupid people. To start, we're going to talk about a subject I've covered on a Megon 2 electric boogaloo concerning a movie called The Lady of Heaven. It has received a fair amount of criticism because white actress, because historical inaccuracy. So much so that the movie was pulled from Cineworld, a movie theatre company. The UK government's position on this was that by banning the movie or removing it from the cinemas, it would be seen as a promotion of a form of cancel culture, something the government claims to not support. This appears though to be a message that did not reach any other lower echelon within the government, advisors more notably, and for this we insert Imam, Kauri Asim, who has long been a government advisor, someone who has campaigned against forced marriages and domestic violence, who also happened to support the campaign to limit free expression, which is what many have touted this to be, and has ultimately left it to Kauri Asim to be dismissed as a government advisor. In a letter that he had received from the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities, he was told, your recent support for a campaign to limit free expression, a campaign which has itself encouraged communal tensions, means it is no longer appropriate for you to continue your work with the government in roles designed to promote community harmony. Further being told that his actions were a clear effort to restrict artistic expression and that the campaign had led to street protests which have fermented religious hatred. There is a belief held by many in the United Kingdom that you can dunk on a few religions, but there are some that are considered untouchable, and I disagree with this. I firmly believe that all religion should be open to criticism, critique, and historical representation in artistic forms, or jokes. I really do like a good joke, and I've stood by this position for years. Why? Because jokes are jokes, movies are movies. If there's some historical inaccuracies that are historical inaccuracies, when it comes to religion though, and it's a very prevalent problem, people will always cry foul and claim historical inaccuracies when it comes to their version or interpretation of their respective faith. And on the Omegon 2 Electric Boogaloo channel linked below, I made it quite clear. This movie could well have served as an education for people who know nothing about Islam. Granted, it would have been historically inaccurate, but that answer is a cop-out. People who complained about it hadn't even seen it. They just relied on a few sources to tell them it was inaccurate. And yes, I'm very much aware of the casting issues. Thank you for that. The film cost 15 million to make. I wasn't expecting it to win an Oscar. It certainly wouldn't anyway, because the Oscars are far too woke and they wouldn't go near that if they had the chance. Not unless they wanted protests outside their buildings too, because you can't depict the Oscars in a statue, of course. <clears throat> now, the letter that Korea Sim received the full text of it is in the article I've linked in the pinned comment with the sources. It is quite thorough, further talking about anti-Shia hatred being a long-standing and very serious issue, which must be challenged at every opportunity as part of a wider effort to combat anti-Muslim hatred, and that they themselves were disappointed to see that Kari Asim had failed to condemn some of the protests complicit in these behaviours. I think this just drives up interest in a movie that no one was going to watch in the first place. Cha-ching! Anyway, moving on. Russia has faced many sanctions, many businesses pulling out of their country, many business dealings ending because of their invasion of Ukraine. We're not here to discuss that, by the way, but a consequence of it. One of the fast food giants that have pulled out of Russia is McDonald's. 
And because I'm that guy, it may well be called fast food, but nothing about it is food. But it does come out of your system pretty quickly, in one large brown lump. If you're lucky, it'll be solid. McDonald's actually pulled out of Russia and sold 800 plus restaurants to Russian businessman Alexander Govor. The Russian government has to try and get their economy up and running because it's only below the United Kingdom and we're doing so well at the moment. Yes, so damn well, we're only above Russia because they're being sanctioned. Fantastic. Russia have been introducing their own equivalents. That is their way of dealing with the issue. For example, Coca-Cola has been rebranded as well as something Russian, no doubt made of potatoes and vodka. McDonald's has been rebranded as something I can't pronounce, but its translation is tasty and that's it. And instead of using the M for McDonald's that they usually use, they've made a different version out of two french fries and a dot, which some believe might well be a burger. The Big Mac and the McFlurry are gone and replaced with Russian alternatives. The belief from the new owner is that customers won't notice too many differences. And when they held a press conference on Pushkin Square, which is where the very first McDonald's opened in Moscow 32 years ago, Oleg Parayev, CEO of this new company, said that our goal is that our guests do not notice a difference either in quality or ambience. With the new company slogan reading, the name changes, love stays. Aww. Understandably though, there were some that aren't best impressed at this rebranding attempt, a hack as it were, at trying to create a fast food giant that could in any way compete with McDonald's. So during this event, a protester simply said, bring back Big Mac, which might not be a burger reference, might not, just saying, we're not here to judge. The current goal of Gova, who is a Siberian oil magnate, is to try and reopen about a quarter of all the branches he owns by the end of the month. So just over 200. And for the sake of scope so you can see just how big McDonald's is, Russia and Ukraine accounted for 9% of McDonald's global sales last year. Other large brands that have left Russia would include Levi's, Apple, and Starcucks. Although I think they should stay in Russia as a punishment for shite coffee. Last week, as many people will know, Britney Spears married Sam Ashgari at her home in Thousand Oaks, California. But it didn't go as smoothly as many people would have thought. There are, yes, some controversies going on with Britney Spears' behavior and, of course, Sam Ashgari's motivations for being with her. I'm not getting involved in any of that. But I do want to focus on Jason Alexander. Who is Jason Alexander? Jason Alexander was trending on Twitter and Jason Alexander is Britney Spears' first husband. They got married in Vegas and they were married for 55 hours. Not even a joke. This was before Kevin Federline. This was a marriage I don't even understand why it happened. But I remember it happening because it was all over the news. People thought, wait, but you're not with Justin Timberlake? How strange. You two look so good together. Who's this bumpkin? Jason Alexander attempted to attend the wedding itself, claiming to security that he had actually been invited by Britney Spears. After a bit of a tussle, because all verbal options had been explored and exhausted, things got physical, and a struggle ensued between Jason Alexander and the event security. Video footage of this did do its rounds, and I'm not going to show it because TMZ have it and they are copyright. Well, they're fans of it. Abusing, that is. Ventura County Sheriff's Department then responded to a trespassing call at Britney Spears' home. This led to Jason Alexander being handcuffed, taken into custody, and arrested. What's interesting about Jason Alexander is he actually supported her during her conservatorship battle with her family, and he actually had attended several Free Britney rallies. However, on the flip side to that, Jason Alexander has a history of lurking outside homes of the singer's family. More recently, back in January, Jason Alexander had visited their homes unannounced. Add to that that Jason Alexander had previously been arrested for violating an order of protection and stalking an unidentified woman in December of 2021. He pled guilty and was sentenced to a year of probation. This is the third arrest, him now at the wedding, in 13 months, with the third arrest being back in January 2021 because he was driving under the influence 
and breaking security protocols at an airport in August of 2021. Britney Spears' attorneys want Jason Alexander prosecuted for breaking into the pop star's home, with one of her lawyers stating that they're working with law enforcement to ensure that Jason Alexander is aggressively prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Considering the number of arrests he's had over a very short period of time and repeated stalking offences, I can see a book being thrown at him, a rather heavy book called The Lair. But I could be wrong on that. I'm now starting to understand why Twitter were very much against Jason Alexander for attempting to disrupt this wedding. As a final thing concerning Jason Alexander, Britney Spears and Sam Ashgari have gotten a restraining order against Jason Alexander for what he did, which was confirmed by Britney Spears' attorney, Matthew Rosengart who had stated that, fortunately, Alexander is incarcerated and under an emergency protective order, which means he has to stay at least 100 yards away from Britney Spears, Stam Ashgari, and her estate in Thousand Oaks, California. 